Shalom, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the hopeful luck. I apologize if you hear any noise or like trains in the background, it's because I'm at work. And I pray that this video, um, first and foremost, is edifying to the elect, and also I pray that you can hear me because the headphones I'm using are kind of low, but hopefully it comes through good. So uh, the topic of this video is going to be, don't ever think it's just you. Sometimes when we go through our afflictions and we go through our problems in this faith, sometimes that demon, Satan, will come upon you and make you think, put thoughts in your mind and make you think that it's just you going through this, and uh, just you going through it and, you know, nobody else feels your pain or, you know, Satan, it's like you're the only person in the world and Satan is only attacking you because you're just so important that Satan will only attack you. But that's not true. So this is Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. It says, I, John, right? And John, this is John the Revelator who was given the visions on the island of Patmos. He was banished there for preaching the gospel. All right? Hold up one second. So like it. it says, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. It says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom of patience of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, was was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of the Most High and for the testimony of Yahweh Shai. So John just told to the seven churches in Asia Minor that he was what? Their brother and companion in tribulation. So John the Revelator also went through his tribulations. Even Paul speaks about how the Lord sent, uh, sent Satan to buffet him. So you see, anytime Satan, which that's one of Satan's tricks, he'll try to get you to be alone. He'll try to get you to think that you're all alone and that you have no help. Uh, one song that I like to listen to, it may sound cheesy, is uh, Lean On Me. And some of the lyrics for that song is uh, Lean On Me When, you, uh, when You're Not Strong. And that's what we're supposed to do with Yahweh Shai. We're supposed to lean on him when we're not strong, which we're not strong in this flesh anyways. We're strong in the spirit because of our faith that we believe in him. But anytime uh, we get weak or we feel low in the spirit, or you may go through affliction, you may get sick, or you know whatever happen, happens in your life, you're supposed to lean upon the Lord. You're supposed to go to the Lord. And the Lord has tools that uh, you can use. First and foremost, the scriptures and also brethren. You can go to brethren if you ever get sick. You can go to brethren if you uh, ever need advice. And just in general, you can go to the Lord and the Lord will give you answers through a brother or maybe through a dream, however he feels to uh, reveal that unto you. But the point, like I said, of this video is to never, uh, never feel like it's just you and you only. You got to remember that however big your camp may be or however members you may have in the faith in your camp, every brother, like John said, is your brother and companion in tribulation. We're all seeking the same penny. We're all going through afflictions. Some, you know, some may be mental, some may be physical, but at the end of the day, we're all getting that ass whooping from the Lord because we deserve it. Matter of fact, uh, let me go to, because uh, the Lord said that he would do these things. It's not like we weren't warned of this. Now, you know, the chastening doesn't feel good, but it is for a reason. And the Lord even warned, uh, not, well, I don't want to say warned, but told us that he would do these things. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, which the Lord in all caps there is Yahweh, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee but I will correct thee in measure. So we're being corrected right now by our tribulations that we are going through. We're not just getting sick or going through hell or catching hell. We weren't put in this predicament for no reason. We were put in this predicament because of our disobedience and our sins against the Heavenly Father. And if we want to return unto the Heavenly Father, we have to go through this chastening, this uh, cleansing, if you will, by the Holy Spirit to be perfected. Just like it says, uh, for gold is tried in the fire. When gold is tried in the fire, it has to go through a, a purification process. It has to be get put in the heat. Excuse me. And if you get sick or if you have any afflictions in the world, maybe problems with your woman, maybe financial issues and things of that nature, whatever your afflictions may be, this is your, your cleansing period. This is the Lord proving you to see if you really are gold. Because like it says in uh, Sirach chapter 2, as uh, gold tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, the Lord needs to try you and see you if you are truly gold. If not, then he'll cast you aside. And that is the scary thing about this faith, this truth. So I read that again. It says, uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 11. It says, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, 
to save thee. So the Lord is with you. But Satan will make it feel like you're by yourself. You're solo dolo. Nobody can help you. But that's not simply true. The Lord is always there. He said to his disciples, for I am with you, lo, always, even unto the end of the world. It's just Satan's uh, job, the deceiver, to make it seem like you're alone, but you're not alone. Uh, Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So this is the correcting and measure, whatever you're going through, whatever your affliction may be. This is the Lord correcting us in measure. Where am I? Okay, yeah, Hebrews 12. Let's go straight to the points. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise thou not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So again, when you're going through these trials and tribulations, when Satan is attacking you, or Satan is working through family members, or you may have financial issues or bodily issues, just know that this is the Lord chastising you, proving you. But he's using Satan, the left hand, to see if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to hold your integrity. Just like uh, Job happened to Job. Job lost his uh, children. His wife pretty much turned on him, said, curse the most high and die. And then his, uh, I believe, three friends came and pretty much was getting on him too, saying, you, you must be wicked, obviously, if the Lord did this to you, not knowing that the Lord was trying him. So it seemed like everybody was just coming uh, against Job. And it seemed like when you read it, Job is all alone. His woman pretty much, I wouldn't want to say she departed from him, but she pretty much is like, yo, just curse the most high and die. Basically saying, make me a widow. You know, his kid, he, how he lost his kids. He lost his riches, his cattle, his gold, some of his uh, homes, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have your best friends, which, you know, you're looking for comfort from your friends. And then your friends is now saying, oh, yeah, you're definitely wicked and putting them down. So it seemed like Job is all by himself. But Job didn't uh, justify himself. He just wanted answers. And he even said... Uh, one of the precepts, uh, though he slay me, will I yet put my trust within him. So although through all of Job's complaints and mourning, he still put his trust in the Lord, even if the Lord was to kill him. Although everybody came against him, and it seemed on the outside that he was alone, but he knew that he wasn't, because he kept complaining to the Lord, seeking the Lord. And that's what we have to do. That's why uh, Job is a good example of what we have to do. Anytime Satan gets on us and tries to make us feel like we're alone, you have to remember that you're not alone. At any point, at any moment, the Lord can make a chariot pop up. The Lord can make an angel pop up. The Lord can make anything. He can turn your situation around like that. You know? Uh, matter of fact, I thought of a precept just now. Hold on. Where is this? If I can't find it, I'll just quote it. I don't want this video to be too long because I'm going to have to get up and go do the rounds very soon. Uh, no, it's Ecclesiastic, because is it 11? Okay, here we go. This is Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 11, verse 21. It says, Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord, and abide in thy labor. And what's our labor? Doing this work. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. And that's dealing with money, but you could be rich uh, with your health as well. If you're sick, the Lord can make you healthy again. If you have financial issues, the Lord can help that. Or whatever situations you may be in, the Lord can deliver you out of that. So don't marvel at, you know, when you see other people not going through and you're going through. And again, like I said, Satan makes it seem like it's just you. Everybody's just attacking you. Marvel not. Because the Lord, it's an easy thing in the sight of the Lord to change something around. Now, I know this is talking about finances, but I just want to use this as an example that the Lord, it's easy. It's nothing for the Lord to change around your, uh, your situation. So don't ever think it's uh, just you by yourself. Uh, can, I'll read it again. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof 
all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons, right? So if you don't go through the chastisement, the Heavenly Father is not going to deal with you as a son because this is how the Heavenly Father deals with his sons. The best example of that is the Lord. The scriptures say the Lord, Yahweh Shai, was acquainted with grief. Uh, he was acquainted with grief. And that's, Yahweh Shai is the name of the Heavenly Father's, uh, the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, which his name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And that name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Those are the two names that we believe in according to faith that can heal us and get us out of uh, any problems and situations. And we are, Lord's willing, we are part of the, uh, the elect. We are going to call upon those names to deliver us from the coming destruction of America, which in the scriptures is known as Babylon the Great. Just want to add that in. Uh, verse 9, it says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Right. So you have an earthly father that corrects you, beats you with the belt. But yet here it is, the Heavenly Father corrects you. And this is his way of correcting you by chastising. Because, see, the Heavenly Father, yeah, he can attack. He is attacking the flesh, but really... He's attacking the spirit. I forgot. Damn it. I wish I could find that quote. Lord's one, if I can, I might make a part two, a slight part two to this. Because there's a video that explains about how when you go through certain ailments in your body, I forgot what it, uh, I got to find the video. When you go through certain ailments of the body and your body's in pain, how it's slowing down your spirit from what you need to do. I forgot how the person broke it down in the video. But Lord's one, I'll, uh, um, Lord's one, if I could find it, I'll just make a slight part to this but um going into that how when your body is not at ease when you may be having an ailment you know a bodily ailment that's also attacking the spirit and the spirit now has to deal with that because the spirit's like you know the spirit is pure energy it's pure power and now it's being slowed down by this flesh and now and that's not only a burden upon the uh, flesh but it's also a burden upon the spirit and these things don't feel good to the spirit Right, so this is how the father, the the father of spirits, chastens us. Yes, it may be he may afflict you uh, physically, but it could also uh, bother you spiritually. Where I mean spiritually, meaning it could also be afflicting your spirit as well. And that's why your spirit cries out to the uh, to the heavenly Father. Uh, verse ten it says, "For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness." Verse eleven. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised, by, uh, exercised thereby. So the reason why we're going through this is for us to be pure just like and be perfect just like our Father is perfect. Yahweh Shai even said that. He said, be, uh, uh, be perfect just like your Father in heaven is perfect. Just got uh, a couple more precepts here. Sorry, let me just move this down a bit. So when you're going through it, you know, don't think that you're by yourself. And don't forget to also, like it says right here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25, brethren, pray for us. So when you're going through it and you know you want brothers to pray for you or you want mercy shown to you, make sure that you also pray for brothers because you never know what brothers may be going through. You know, some brothers, like even myself, don't like talking about what they go through, are very silent and things like that. But you never know what brothers may be going through. So always pray for brothers. Always try to remember to pray for brothers because you never know what they may be going through, just like you, whatever you may be going through. And I'll end it with this precept. I'll just head to the point. This is First Peter chapter five verse nine. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? It's talking about Satan. To resist Satan. Uh, matter of fact, I'll just read it. Hopefully, I have enough time. Uh, yeah, I'll start at six. This is First Peter chapter five verse six. It says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the Most High, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you." Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So that was the whole point that Peter was talking about, which Peter is the head apostle 
of the the twelve. He's saying that remember uh, to resist Satan because remember that the same afflictions, the same thing that you're going through. Although you, we all have our different afflictions, we all have our different uh, hell. The same thing is happening to your brothers in the world. Matter of fact, let me get this in the NI, NLT. It says, stand firm against him, which is talking about the spiritual demons saying these spiritual attacks that we have to go uh, deal with, and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering as you are. So the point of the video, like I was saying, is don't ever think that's just you. Don't think that just, you're just going through it. That's just a trick, a wile of Satan to make you feel like it's, you're all alone when you're really not. You have brethren for you, uh, the brotherhood. For you sisters, uh, I apologize, I've never heard of a sisterhood, but uh, you sisters, hopefully you can go, uh, if you have a husband, you can go to your husband. If not, I don't know if there's a sisterhood. I'm not trying to be funny, it's just I've never heard of a sisterhood. But if you sisters, you can go to other sisters if you have that. And uh, talk to them, you know, open up, say, you know, what's bothering you and the Lord will work through that person. Bring out precepts, bring out things to, uh, you know, help you out. And you know, and you uh, when you go through these things, you'll see that how uh, Satan just jumps off you, comes off you. You know, you might get the anointing all, get a, uh, anointing for you and, um, you know, get that demon off you. And, you know, that's what the Lord really wants. He wants us to come to him. You know, sometimes you just got to make things simple. Apostle Kabar always speaks about it. And uh, I remember going to college, my uh, college teacher, when I had to take speech class, said it. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, you know, there's more to this truth, obviously, than just knowing the name and things like that. But keep it simple. You know, you know, the Lord, we know that the Lord wants us to come back to him. We know the Lord gave us tools. Utilize the tools and, you know, utilize the brethren, utilize the scriptures, utilize the, uh, the anointing oil, the uh, herbs and things like that. You know, you have uh, uh, many tools to use to help you combat Satan. And just always remember that you're not alone, like it says here. You know, the same thing is happening to brothers and sisters in the world as well. So don't ever feel like it's just you by yourself going through these things. I uh, pray that this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kutash. Uh, final note, uh, if anybody could let me know, Lord's willing, when I upload this on the comments, if someone could let me know if this video was too low, if anything like that. Bubba Bashar, just put a uh, comment letting me know if my voice was too low. Shalom.